So you're a little over 5'10", but you fought as light as 130 pounds. Mm -hmm. What's involved with getting down to that weight? Uh, wow. A lot of suffering, a lot of pain. Like, what, what do you, you actually do? <sighs> um, there were days where I would just suck on an orange, you know? While I was training, uh -huh. you know, here you have an athlete who's supposed to you know, you're supposed to eat the right foods, you know. And, and consume a lot of calories when you're training. Consume a lot of calories because you're training so hard mm -hmm. and, and you're, you're sweating. And uh, um, I would eat an orange a day for about a week, literally, um, just to make weight. I remember in one fight, I, uh, I was struggling to make 130 pounds, okay, my first world title. I was just so angry and I just didn't know what to do and I was just going to give up again, just forget it. I lose. I ended up weighing, I ended up losing, yeah, I ended up weighing two, 127 pounds that, that morning because I couldn't eat anything. Wow. And uh, I don't know how I fought, I don't know how I, I ended up beating the kid in the 10th round but... Uh, how much do you think about food when you're eating only an orange a day? You're thinking about food constantly. You're thinking about chocolate. You're thinking about, I was a huge McDonald's guy. <laughs> huge, loved McDonald's. I would always think about Big Macs, loved Big Macs. Um, now you probably just got an endorsement. Yeah, well, I had McDonald's endorsement for many years, but it's funny because it's like, I was so disciplined, you know, and I was trained to be this way that Hey, if you have to starve, you starve, you know? You can think about it, sure, absolutely. Yeah, but you have to suffer. In order to win, in order to fight, in order to, to be champion, you have to suffer. That's, that's what I was taught, you know? Before a fight, you apparently sweat a lot, have uh, butterflies in your stomach. I explain the feeling. I, y you don't wanna fight. And it's not, it's not that I'm scared, it's just that I'm nervous. And it's in every single fight. I couldn't stand up from the couch I was sitting on. Once they called me up to go up in the ring, I just couldn't get up. I was, so, I was just nervous. But once the first bell rings, then it's like game on. Here we go. Butterflies just go flying away and you're not feeling nervous. Now, now it's like, now it's like, okay, let's do this. So you're naturally left-handed. Uh, why were you made into a righty? It was tough for my first trainer to, to hold the mitts for me. It was, it was just difficult for him. He couldn't figure it out because I was lefty. So as, at five years old, um, he, just, he, he couldn't figure out how to train me. So he said, why don't you switch over and put your left foot forward and, and just have that, that normal stance, you know, the orthodox, uh, the, 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 you know, that normal stance there like that, right-handed. And, and that's how, I, that's how I, I started training and fighting and uh, best thing ever that can happen to me because now, now my left hand is a strong, you know, that strong left jab uh, is my best punch. Uh, in boxing, it's just, it's, it's my secret weapon, you know. And for a while you trained by chopping wood and you ran with boots on. Yeah. Uh, how did you find that helped you? Or did it? <sighs> I never understood why I was chopping wood. I mean, made for a good fire, you know, and then those cold uh, yeah, right. winter nights, you know, and Big Bear. Uh, and Big Bear. I never understood why I was chopping wood and why I was running with, you know, four pound boots on each leg for miles and miles. And I just never understood it until, until I got in that ring, you know, on fight night. And I would just glide, I would just glide and box and light as a feather. And my punches would come out so fast. 
then I would be like, wow. You know, the chopping of the wood, the running with the boots, yeah, it, it helps.